Hi, and welcome. If you're in real estate in Dubai, you know that the cold calling is the most common ways to get the clients and the listings. You've probably tried it yourself, maybe even recently, but let's be honest, 90% of the time cold calling ends in rejection. And what rejection? It hurts, doesn't it? But what if I told you that you could stop feeling that pain and instead turning those no's into opportunities? In these videos, I'll explain why rejection during the cold calls feels so personal and painful, and more importantly, how you can retrain your mind to overcome that fear. Uh, stay with me till the end because I'm sharing the powerful strategies which will help you not only to handle the rejection, but also to make more money and more listings in this cold calling game. And I'm sure you do not want to miss that. Okay, my favorite, rejection. First of all, guys, the client doesn't owe you anything, doesn't have any obligations in front of you. When we got rejected, we automatically feel upset. Why? Because we're coming into the call or we're coming into the relationship with expectations of yes. You don't have to expect yes. You have to expect no. So when you expect no and you get a no, are you getting upset? But when I'm saying expecting no, it doesn't mean that you're hoping that no one go and pick up. It's not that type of a no. It's the same way as you are going through your sales process with the client and you expect the objections in the end. They should be objections. There is no chance there is going to be no objections. As much as you prehandle them, there's still going to be objections. And can you imagine you arrive in the end and there is no objections? Are you happy? Hell yes. But if you expect that there is going to be no objections and the client is giving you objection, the tone of your voice, your face, you will not be able to control it. It's like you are annoyed. If I feel, and the same is with you, if you feel that someone is annoyed when you're being a client, someone is annoyed when you are giving them your concerns. And for the client, guys, the objection is just the concern that they have. They have this concern, they're voicing it, and you are annoyed. So that means that you don't care about me, you don't care about my concern, you only care about what? Selling me. All the trust that you build, all the report, all the management of sale resistance before is gone, and I stop trusting you in the end, which is the worst, I believe. The client doesn't owe you anything, and you are coming into this call with intent to find people you can help. Not to sell, not to find the listing, not to get this listing out of this call. Well, if I'm not getting the 10 listing out today called calling, that's a bad day. Guys, for you to be persistent is the same way as you have a consistency going into the gym or doing any type of work which will fruit the results in a time, in a month. Your goal is to execute the X amount of calls. For example, 25 at least a day, meaning to dial 25 numbers. Depending on how you're going to plan your day, I would say in the beginning of your career that you don't have much listings. I will split myself into learning, secondary market areas, statistics of the market, off plan, as if new development, new developers, how the, the sales went from this developer for the previous project, checking all of this information and cold calling. Hitting maybe from five to 800 numbers a day, three, four hours, because this is the foundation of you creating your <laughs> confidence with the client, with any client. Can you imagine if you will do 500 calls five days a week for a month, what's going to happen with you, with your confidence level? In anything, forget about sales, in anything. How confident you will feel in any conversation with a client when you've done that? Can anything change it? Can anything give you the same result? 
not only with your communication, understanding the client, understanding their perspective, but as well in dealing with the clients on the market. Is it painful? Hell yes. Should you be consistent? Yes. So that mindset is I'm going to get the six pack after one day in the gym, or I'm going to get a six pack after the six months in the gym. Being consistent with my sleep, count steps, and calorie intake. Only like this. There is nothing else. I mean, if you're 20 and you just still have a fantastic metabolism and you're born with genetic predisposition for it, oh my God, you will get there. But we are not all there. But if you imagine with those who have already a nice communication skills on the cold corner, what would happen to their skills if they will do that? The same challenge, 30 days, 500 numbers every day. What will happen with them? How much more money they will make? Not during this month, in the next three, four, five, six months, because this is how you build your pipeline. You are looking for someone you can help. Guys, I will quickly give you this uh, comparison, which is gonna help you to be persistent with your cold callings. Because why we are not willing to do the cold callings? We think we interrupt people, think we're annoying, we, we think we want something from them, I want something for myself, I want to make money, and I'm annoying them. Of course, with this type of mindset, you're never going to be able to do 500 calls. I mean, maybe if you're a psychopath and you're, oh yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love bothering people. No, but we're all good people coming from the good place, right? So imagine your mindset changed. And you are, as you know, guys, I love the knowledge of the doctor. You are the doctor walking on the street, and then you see on the side road someone who just had an injury on the bike or bicycle, I don't know, a car crash. And he's bleeding just there, and you're a doctor. You can pass by, well, maybe he doesn't need me, I don't know. Maybe it's just like, <laughs> I don't want to bother him. He seems okay. It's fine. Right? Or you're coming and offering help. And if you're going to say no, that's fine as well. But your duty is to offer help. And when you're coming from the place that I want to help you not to sell your property and make money, your ability to make those calls, the way you're going to feel through those calls is going to be different. And this is all about how you will feel yourself. Because I don't want you in any chance to hate your job, guys. Coming into the office now, Jesus Christ, I am not this calls, I'm just going to kill me, right? I don't want you to do that. That's not how we operate as human beings. That's going to give you burnout, that's going to give you, you're just going to cancel your career. You're not going to make money from that place. So that's not a gambling, guys. It's more understanding. No one owns me anything. I'm coming from the place where I can help. If he doesn't need help, that's completely fine with me. I'm still a doctor, right? Uh, why we do not like rejection? I was talking about this a little bit already. Give me some ideas quickly. Throw away the balls into me. Yes. Lowers our self-worth. Self -worth because we feel bad about ourselves. Ego. Hmm? Ego. Ego. Uh -huh. Makes us feel weak. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Okay, en enough. That, 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 that's enough, guys. So, the reason that affects you that way, because all of us, we have deep emotional rooted traumas. All of us, specifically women, <laughs> of us being rejected. If you don't believe that or you don't remember, the time when the mom left you and you were a toddler, two years old, and mom left you crying in the other room and she went away, you felt rejected. You don't remember, but this is how you felt, left and rejected. We all felt through that experience. And we all know and remember how it feels. Back in the childhood, 
because our brain is not properly formed yet after um, up to the age of 21 we feel and think that everything in our world is because of us my parents divorced i'm the reason my mom is sick because of me or she is upset it's because of me this is how we feel reminds you about anything in the adult years <laughs> The rejection that you have on a call is nothing towards you at all. It's a bad day of someone who is calling. You called and he's in the middle of driving. Oh, I'm so sorry. Being in the toilet, right? Just so many things can happen. So many things can go wrong. Be aware of that. I'm not telling you to go to a psychiatrist and kind of start healing yourself. But if you feel that you specifically deep deeply in pain which feels like a little bit like a physical with a location in some chest area here you go this is your trauma from before ego desire to always be liked right we always want to be appreciated and in females i'm so sorry ladies specifically we base our self-worth on external validation if we base our self-worth on external validation, we always want to be validated positively. And if someone is telling, oh, no, I don't need it, oh, my God, something is wrong with me, right? And ego always wants to be right, always wants to be on the top. Attachment to external self-validation, addition, I just said about that. Cold calling is not the place to seek for validation. Never. You will have to do the gratitude journal, <laughs> do some other things which help you to realize that you have enough of skills, that whatever you have is enough for you to be successful. Cold calling is not one of them. Group dependent evolutionary embodied mechanism of survival. This is the big one, guys. Have you ever heard about this one? Do you know what it is? Back then, in, you know, when we were with... Uh, like, I don't know, mammoths and we're just fighting the tigers. And I'm talking about like way before real estate, actually, when we, our real estate were in the caves, <laughs> a tense max. We all s s were able to survive only in a group or in a tribe, only in a group. So if you've been kicked out of the tribe, rejected, that automatically meant that you're going to die because you are not able to survive alone. You are not able to hunt alone. You are a victim for other tribes, which never gonna accept you, most probably. You don't have any harvest. No one is protecting you. You don't have any shelter. That means for us to be uh, safe and secure in our life, we had to be in a group. That's why we still feel that way because the evolution mechanisms are so deep-rooted in us. That's why we are still surviving. And we want to be around people, right? Even now, we want to go in a bar. Or well, you have the same drinks in your home or whatever, tea. Or you can have a coffee in the house. Why would you pay 25 dirhams to Starbucks, right? Because we want to be around people. We are social animals. So all of those things will never go away, guys. Even if I told you that this is how it is, the rejection will still feel painful for you. What would you say? <laughs> Olga, how is that possible? No, just give me this magic pill. I just don't want to feel that. I just want to jump on a call and just be so bubbly and funny, right? Guys, I, I cannot take it away. But when you know what is happening, it's going to give you a little bit more control of your emotion. So first of all, for you to be successful on a call, what do you think you have to control? The only thing that you can control, actually, on a cold calling. Your state. Your emotional state where you have when you are on the call or how to bring you back to the high emotional energetic state when you had a bad call. You know how to do that? What Tony Robbins is saying? Change your body position. So if you sit it, stand up, and jump listen to the music for two minutes find the music which gives you the good emotions which lifts you up so the only thing 
and guys, this is what I'm discovering as well, and being a business owner and entrepreneur, specifically on the beginning of development of your, of your business, the most important thing out of everything, marketing, connection, sales, is how you manage your own emotional state. If you go into the low emotional state, you cannot do things, everything is bad, this is this fault, this is that fault, nothing is happening, nothing is working, your business is going to die. The same for you guys. The only thing you have to manage, and this is I came to realization quite recently, we all heard about like motivational meditation, do this, do that, and you're just like, what the hell is this, this is just bullshit. It's for you to manage, to kind of dress yourself into the emotional state, which gives you confidence, security, and pleasure of doing things going through the day. How does it feel? It's like a little bit of woo-woo from me. How does it feel? Do, do, you, do you understand what I'm talking about? More or less. Right? Well, you, you know, sometimes you're in a good mood, sometimes you're in a bad mood. When you're in a bad mood, what you should do? Generally listen to music. What else? I will take the I want to stay in bed. I always push myself to stand up. Yeah. Something that I want to do. Guys, the energy. Yeah. When, when we are stuck, when we feel scared, we have to start moving, start doing something. It's going to make the energy flow. There is one more thing, which is very simple and easy, is write yourself a list of the things which are filling you up with the energy. It can be just a, just a stupid one, reading a book, going for a walk, having a coffee in your favorite place. Something which brings you joy, a simple thing, and make sure that one two times, three times a week, you can play with the number. You look at the list and do something from that list, which brings you back to the good emotional state. Sounds very simple, guys, but this is a very powerful thing. Because if not, and you feel that sometimes you've fallen into this kind of emotional hole and you cannot get out of it, nothing will help you but yourself, right? You can watch some motivational YouTube videos, that's fine. But when you're going to sit down first with yourself, take your phone in your notes. There is no need to do like extra, extra work. Write down. Think first. What makes me feel good about myself? And you will surprise that sometimes there's nothing is coming. I was like, well, well I never thought about that that way. But this is kind of self-discovery. This is the first step into your emotional intelligence, which is business intelligence, which is a human connection and uh, interaction intelligence. Now, when we've unpacked why rejection feels so tough, it's time to take action. Rejection is inevitable. It's a cold calling. And especially when you are selling real estate in Dubai, there is hundreds of agents. But here's the thing. It's not about the rejection that defines your success. It's how you respond to it. I created a free cold calling script that will help you to stay confident, push through and turn this no's into yeses and, and book this listing appointment. You can download it below uh, in the description of this video. And remember, most of successful agents are not the ones who avoid rejection. They are the ones who master it. Keep dialing, keep improving, and with my script, it's going to be way easier for you to get to this quality conversation. Why? Because you're going to sound so different than any other agent in Dubai. This, this is what I teach, how to be different and become a trusted advisor. So they will have no choice but choose you. See you in the next